the channel. Um, when I bought this M2 competition, it was in stock with uh, with Williams in Manchester, and um, they, you know, it, they did me a really good deal. And I have no complaints at all. Uh, it had a nice spec on it, but I think if I'd ordered the car myself, the one thing that I probably would have ordered differently would be the gearbox. Um, I've done previous videos on the DCT gearbox and on this car, and I'll, you can have a look at those videos. Um, but there's always been a little nagging doubt in the back of my mind whether I bought the right car or not, whether I should have uh, hung out for a manual. I think the majority of the cars that BMW sell, I think the vast majority of M2 competitions that they sell have been spec with this DCT gearbox. Um, but I'm a bit old school really, and I like to do things myself. I like a do-it-yourself gearbox. I like three pedals. Um, now, don't get me wrong, there's no complaints at all about this gearbox. You'll see in, in the videos about DCT gearboxes that I've done before um, that I really love this gearbox. It's very accurate, it's very quick, it matches revs perfectly. Um, in this car you can change the sort of, it's the sort of, well I think BMW call it the ferocity, but you can change the feel of the gear change. It feels like it's changing the speed of the gear change. But for me as, as somebody you know I suppose it's ingrained in me I've been brought up with manual gearboxes I've always thought in terms of a sports car having a manual gearbox and being involved having that bit more involvement um, there's always been this nagging doubt that I might have got the wrong car so just to make sure I'm meeting up with a friend of mine this morning up on the Dales you see we're up near Ribblehead Viaduct at the moment it's very busy up here today um, and he's got an M2 competition with a manual gearbox. So we're going to give it a try back to back with this car and see what we think. Now on paper, um, the DCT is marginally quicker and marginally more efficient. And that, that makes perfect sense. It's got the software, it's got the computer making a lot of calculations. Um, if, if I want to launch the car, the car is basically doing it all for me. It's, uh, it's getting the revs just at the right point and it's releasing the clutch and managing the wheel spin and all the rest of it. In a manual car you'll never be able to do that. And I suppose the other advantage that this gearbox has got on paper is that it's got an, an additional ratio. So we've got seven speed in this, six speed in the manual. Um, top gear is similar with a similar top speed. So somewhere in the mix there, there is a, um, the opportunity for the car to keep itself in the sweet spot on the revs just a little bit longer than you would do in a manual car. Um, but that's all objective stuff, that's all technical stuff. I know when BMW quote the DCT as doing 0-60 in 4.2 seconds and the manual is doing it in 4.4 seconds. That is just... I mean, it's just unnecessary. You never do 0-60, you never do those starts. BMW will have been thrashing those cars, their test drivers will have thrashed those cars to get those numbers. Um, but even so, there's still a 0.2 of a second difference between those acceleration figures. It's there, it's that kind of acceleration that matters more on the road. Overtaking, pulling out of corners, driving out of corners. So I think the objective difference between the cars is going to make very little difference really. I certainly didn't buy this car and this gearbox because it's a bit faster. It doesn't make any sense, that kind of stuff. You wouldn't be able to feel the difference between 4.2 and 4.4 to 0-60. You just wouldn't be able to feel that difference at all. It's much more subjective. It's about how the cars feel and how they make you feel. Because we don't buy these cars for their efficiency, do we? We buy them because we enjoy them. We buy them because we enjoy leaning on them in the corners, braking, accelerating through the corners the car come alive underneath you. So is this car missing anything over the manual? Well it's certainly not missing anything as far as enjoyment is concerned. I mean you can see I'm having a whale of a time in this car at the moment. It's quick, it handles really nicely, it links in lovely with that just get past this bike, links in lovely with that rear axle. comes together nicely as a package. Now, the software's playing a part in that to a degree. Certainly that e-diff, that variable rear differential, is making the car feel alive. So there's no doubt that I love this car and I love this gearbox. I think whatever the outcome is today, I'm not going to regret getting this car. 
hopefully. Maybe I'll come away thinking I've definitely bought the right car, I don't know. But let's go and meet up with my mate, let's go and have a look at his M2 competition with a manual gearbox. And let's drive the two cars back to back and see what we think. in the manual M2 competition and pretty much the first few seconds of me driving this car so I'll really share those fresh thoughts with you about what I think about this uh, this car and this gearbox um, I suppose the other thing I should mention about this car is that this has the big brake kit um, so it'd be nice to do a direct comparison between the brakes on my car and the brakes on this one as well so, but let's concentrate on the gearbox to start with so first thoughts are the clutch action is really nice and light actually to be honest I was expecting quite a hefty clutch driven other manual M3s older on manual M3s before and I think if I compare it with my M135 as well this clutch is lighter um, you have to be careful with that because when you've got a light clutch there's always a temptation that you're going to feather the cl clutch rather than try and keep it in or out um, so clutch wear is is a bit easier it's easier to wear the clutch if you like in a, in a car with a, with a light clutch action because you tend to ride the clutch a little bit more you tend to sit on that biting point a little bit more uh, the gearbox is um, it feels typically BMW, so they've always got a little bit of a notchy element to them but and a slightly rubbery action, but actually not as bad as a lot of other BMW gearboxes that I've driven. Probably one of the best uh, BMW gearboxes, that uh, manual gearboxes that I've, that I've tried. So the action's nice, the clutch action's nice, that makes it, in, in the same way as my car, it makes it a very easy everyday drive makes it something you could drive comfortably on the commute you won't have any issue being stuck in traffic um, you know edging forward in traffic and things like that that nice light action action on the clutch makes it a lot easier in in traffic so we'll take our time through here because it's really busy near the viaduct but looking up ahead we've got a little bit of a clear run so once the road opens up let's let's open the car up let's move it along a bit see how it feels when we drive it with a little bit more determination, shall we say. So I've put the car in, um, my friend's got his M2 settings very similar to me, the M2 button uh, on the steering wheel. So MDM mode is on, it's got the sharper throttle. As far as overall feel with the car, clearly it's the same car, it's very little difference. So the chassis feels just as nice. It's a brake then, because that driver was pulling out to pass the cyclist um, I have to say with these larger brakes the initial feel of the brakes is no different to mine uh, I suspect that they will be better at handling heat they'll dissipate heat better so they'll last longer before you get brake fade but the actual initial bite of the brakes is no sharper than it is on my car with the standard brakes on I mean I don't like to rush gear changes in a manual car you don't like to rev match the car automatically rev matches I think it's a setting that you can turn off but actually it does a nice job you could hear it rev match then that's not me um, so if you just take your time with that gear change it really matches the revs beautifully now with having six ratios rather than seven I'm not quite as busy with the gearbox as well. I tend to find that I'm changing gear quite a lot. I suppose part of that is that it's easier in the DCT gearbox than it is in this. It's just a flick of the uh, paddle. Um, but what I'm tending to do with this car on this first drive is take a gear and hold it. And ride that torque and maybe use the lower revs. Breaking into a corner can overlap the brakes a little bit with the gear change because it rev matches for you which is nice so I'm not having to faff about heel and toe gear changing so I have to say as a package the manual in this car the way that they've matched everything together the rev matching the gear change action the clutch action the way it links with that variable differential on the rear axle BMW have done a cracking job with this. 
performance wise you wouldn't notice any difference at all in real terms there is no difference whatsoever between the performance of this and the performance of mine I'm looking in the mirror now my friends follow me up the road in in my m2 all right i'm not really pressing on that much but even if i drove 10 tenths on this this road he wouldn't have any problem keeping up with me and i wouldn't have any problem keeping up with him to delay the gear change a little bit longer than I would in mine uh, again it's because I want the car sort of straight fired off right out of the corner onto the straight before I'm changing gear in this because I don't want to still have some steering angle on when I'm starting to change gear whereas in mine uh, it's a little flick of the fingers so you can perhaps perhaps change up a little bit earlier perhaps short shift a little bit more often in mine than you would in this so I think I think stepping from the DCT into this, I've almost immediately changed my driving style a little bit. I'm thinking about where I'm putting that gear change in because it requires more effort. But those of us that enjoy driving and enjoy manual, gear, manual gearboxes, we like that effort, don't we? We like the work involved in moving this car along the road. people say they're not fans of automatic rev matching um, you know I'd quite happily turn it off in this car I think DCT I, I think the sorry I think the st stability control has to be completely off uh, to turn off the rev matching but actually it does a really nice job of it it's a sharp rev and it holds the revs and it matches it nicely for when you bring the clutch up so real world performance of both these cars exactly the same no difference a lovely third to third gear change there they're always the smoothest enjoyment am i enjoying this more than mine this is the key question really when i draw this was i going to regret having bought the car with the dct gearbox actually no i don't there is one other element with my car that's much more difficult to do in this and that's left foot braking uh, now I've never been a huge advocate of left foot braking but I've started to teach myself left foot braking in the DCT car and I will do a video later on in the summer to share with you what I've learnt about left foot braking and what I think the perceived and the genuine benefits are on the road. Um, you can left foot brake in a manual perfectly easily uh, but the gear change element is more difficult and it's more complex and you, it's a bit more of a ballet dance on the pedals um, whereas in mine it's that little bit easier so that ability to left foot brake gives it a little advantage over this um, is it more enjoyable changing gear yourself yes but i don't feel like i'm losing anything in that respect with the dct gearbox so when I talk about the difference in driving style, let me just show you what I mean through these next couple of series, a couple of double bends. On approach to this, I'm thinking I'm in third gear now, and I am just going to keep third gear all the way till we come out the other side. I'll go a little bit of offside here to give me the correct entry position for the left hander, and then I'm starting to press the gas. Now in mine, I'd click the gear up there. In this, I'm changing up here. But again, mine has closer ratios. It's got an additional ratio showing. So in this, I'm looking to ride third gear all the way through the corners. Again, down to third here. I'm going to go offside on the way in. I'm going to hold third gear all the way through this corner on the gas. In mine, I'd go for fourth there. In this, third gear is longer. So I drive the car out of the corner and then get the gear rather than getting the gear just as I'm coming out of the corner. Is one better than the other? I don't think so. They're just different. I'm adjusting my style to suit the different uh, the different gearbox uh, and the different ratios in the gearbox. So I've driven both of these cars back to back now. Do I wish I bought the manual? <laughs> the so little in it. There's absolutely no way that I can say I have any regret over getting mine with the DCT gearbox or any regret over not getting this manual. As a personal preference, do you know what? I think, I think the DCT just edges it. Um, and that's because in my normal every, I'm not normally driving like this. Normally I'm driving in traffic, I'm doing the commute. Um, 
driving around locally in that car just stick it in automatic it's so easy it's so comfortable uh, it's so effortless that, that I think it's worth it for that once we start pressing on on these roads it's a slightly different style when you when you're driving more quickly I think you feel like you can get the gears a little bit earlier because it's it's less effort but you change gear a little bit more often as well because again it's less effort it's just a flick of your fingers or it's just a little snick on the gear gear stick what the manual does is it introduces this additional element of involvement in driving the car I'm more involved in it and I do love that I do love being involved in driving the car so I'm back in mine now with the DCT gearbox do I regret getting this gearbox over the manual no not for one second and that isn't to say that this is either a better or worse car than the manual now, it might sound like a bit of a cop out of that but what I'm going to say is these cars are equally as good as each other in all other respects they're the same car engine chassis it's the seating position, the technology, the rear diff especially and that MDM mode on the stability control, they're the same car. It's like having two different flavours of crisps, both of which you like. I like cheese and onion and I like salt and vinegar. I couldn't tell you which one I prefer more than the other and it's very difficult for me to say whether I prefer this DCT or the manual. If somebody gave you either of these cars you would be perfectly happy. So my friend behind us in the manual car, I suspect he's happy with his manual and he's out of driving this. I'm happy with the DCT. Would I swap it for his? No, because it needs a wash and there's no fuel in it. But other than that, I'd happily swap for a manual, but I'd happily keep it as well. So if you were hoping for an absolute clear outcome of this test, I'm afraid you're gonna be disappointed. The message is purely subjective here, it's down to what you enjoy more. Do you enjoy using a manual gearbox? Or do you enjoy the convenience of this DCT? But it's also got that, that real drive, that real connected feeling of a manual gearbox as well. And it's got the extra ratio. Which does change your driving style a little bit. You don't tend to hang on to the gears as long in this car. So, sorry if that's a bit of a vague outcome for you. I suppose the message is, whichever one you buy, you'll enjoy it. These are great cars, manual or DCT. You're not going to be disappointed either way. It's just down to personal preference. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you've not already, subscribe to the channel. you get a reminder every time I put a new video on. If you want more information about advanced and performance driving or motorcycling as well, we're doing the bike stuff now, go have a look at the website, reglocal.com. And give us a follow on Twitter as well, at reglocal. But for now, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.